hard not to in Valentino. <laughs> I can't even imagine what this thing cost. Oh, come on. Ash was adamant and she picked it out before she left for Bali. Oh, it's very sweet. <laughs> okay. Both of you. Here. Come on, tradition. Tradition! <laughs> for special nights. <laughs> You've won about a million awards. What's special about this one? <laughs> <laughs> because tonight I'm spending it with my oldest, dearest friend. Kids, no spouses, just the two of us like old times. To us, two old friends sharing our lives together. Jules. Hey. Jules. Thank you guys so much for being here on this very, very steamy Thursday. It's swampy, yeah. Muggy, swampy, yeah. The bayou. That's a very good adjective. Um, this, the pilot, uh, is amazing. It reminded me so much of the big chill in terms of kind of the flashbacks to the sweeter time and how it impacted these adults' lives. How did both of you come to do it? And were you fans of Meg Wolitzer, whose book this is based on? Um, well, uh, uh, I auditioned, actually, we both auditioned. Oh, yeah. We both auditioned oh, at the same time. When Lauren walked in, I was like, oh, no brainer. Got this is start. Jules. Yeah. Um, and same. I was also auditioning for that same role. Holds. Yeah. Well, that's nice. <laughs> but we were auditioning for the same role, and they went with her. And then I kind of begged them to write a th No, I'm kidding. They, they, we, we audition like actors do. And um, I wasn't <clears throat> familiar with the book. Uh, until obviously the project came up and uh, it's a really long book <laughs> and um, Meg will probably kill me for saying this but I got about uh, well, probably 120 pages in before I switched over to the book on tape <laughs> and uh, that helped a lot. Hey, you know uh, what, as long as you read it in some version, who yeah, cares, right? I gave it a shot um, but it's, it's beautiful and um, really inspiring and um, there's a lot of story to tell in a life, mm -hmm. and in six lives, there's, you know, it's, there's, there's just a lot, there's a lot to tell. Yeah. And what about you and Jules? Because Jules isn't an inherently, li I mean, it's so, I don't even want to say she's an unlikable character, because she's, a, she's just a normal woman yeah, who doesn't know what she wants. she's a normal lady, and she's you know? flawed, mm -hmm. um, but I think always, good intention, well-intentioned, and uh, striving to be a good person, striving to be a good mother, um, striving to be a good actor, which doesn't work out. Um, you know, the, the story, the book, and the, the show uh, has this big mystery, and it's this heightened thing, this crime that has taken place, and so there's this big event, but then really the day-to-day the of this person's life, which is also just so much fun to play, which is, you know, her, well, everybody's really, everybody's life, what you expected it to be versus what your life actually pans out being. And I don't know, it's, it's very moving to me to play these scenes. And also you, you get to see, you see these characters making decisions and then you don't have to imagine or wait to see the outcome. <laughs> you pretty instantly, we, you know, we cut to 10 years later and then you see the impact of the decision that they made at the time that you thought was terrible and, or good. And, and, the, and that's exactly what you said. It's, it's watching it totally made me think, you know, when I was 15 or 16 or younger, I had this very specific vision of what life would be. Yeah. And you think about it now and it's like, not even close, right? <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, when you're 15, you're, you know, your world is a lot smaller than you think it is. Um, you're obnoxious. 
you're probably very annoying. Um, you're your own biggest fan. Uh, and, you know, the, the potential is, uh, is infinite. Um, and then life kind of, as it should, kicks your ass. And uh, that's kind of... The point, probably. Yeah, I mean, you... And I it mean, happens quickly and without you knowing it, too. <laughs> right, you know, right? exactly. Like you said, decisions you make that seem trivial at the time you know, end up becoming the most important decisions you've ever made, you know, without really knowing them at the time. The show is really, it, 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 it's about chasing greatness and, um, and how the, the inherent risk in pursuing uh, a great life, a life of, of, of success and riches and fame and artistic, um, um, <coughs> or, or artistic relevance and how that really is a risk and oftentimes it just doesn't pan out. And then what are you? What do you do? How do you identify yourself? Well, it's interesting because you're, for your character, it does pan out. He yeah. lives out exactly what he wanted to do, which is he starts out being obsessed with cartoons right. and wind, winds up being an award-winning creator. And what's maddening is that he's, with all his success, he's a really good guy. Mm -hmm. um, so it hasn't gone to his head necessarily. And he's really kind of the cement that holds the group of friends together. They all look to him for guidance. Um, and, and, and they're sort of all his muse, in a way. Um, without them, he's nothing. And in the pilot, um, the younger version of my character, who's played by a really great actor named Ed Squires. Um, Ed. Ed, yeah. And uh, he, he sort of shows an early rendering of his, um, his cartoon series, which ends up becoming a phenomenon, sort of like The Simpsons or Family Guy. But this is when he's 15 and they're just kind of sketches that he put together. And he shows it to the younger version of Lauren's character, who's played by Katie Balin. And um, they, uh, and, and you know, she really takes to it. She really inspires him to keep going. And so their relationship as they get older, um, is, is really a bond that he doesn't have with anyone else. Uh, Jules and Ethan are sort of connected in that way in the sense that he can't do it without her. What I find interesting too about your character in this is that he, I think he, he kind of has nothing to lose. Like you come from, he comes from nothing and right. has nothing to lose. And then some of the other characters have tremendous access to, or access to tremendous wealth and, and fancy lives. And they, they're also incredibly successful. And then Jules is sort of neither particularly talented nor comes from incredible wealth or has nothing to lose. She's from a middle class existence. And so she just has that backup plan. Like she can fall back, and she does. She falls back on going to school and becoming a therapist. And, um, um, but yet she has to live around her friends incredible annoying success and uh you know and it's maddening yet she loves them i don't know i think we can all relate to that on some level like imagining your life going one way and then what it actually and how you want to be so happy for your friends but there's this little part of you that's like god damn it <laughs> right and it's in her face every all day time. all the time yeah. and to complicate things there's this big secret um right. that uh that Jules is being asked to keep by my wife from me. So it's this major thing that my wife, who's played by Jessica Paré, should tell me, really should tell me. Um, should have probably told you before you got married. Should have told me way before we got married. And it's just the <laughs> kind of thing you tell your husband. Yeah. Um, but she hasn't. And the only other person that knows is, is Jules. Now, both of you came up in theater on stage. Did you guys... You just especially sort of it, sort of. Uh, did you did either of you ever attend arts camp like like you see in this in the show? I yeah I I um well I I studied singing. It's actually I mean I use this very much in this mm -hmm. uh, this piece that we're working on or that we worked on. Um, I studied singing and I I mean I thought I was going to be an opera singer for a long time and then I I. 
my life took a different path, and so many of my friends are opera singers, and, um, and I went to this music program, this fabulous elite music program, Ooh. you know, and here at, at camp in the summertime at, at Tanglewood, and, um, and here I was just this, like, little girl from Connecticut, like, from New Haven. I had, you know, not from that realm at all, and... Um, so it's very relevant, very relevant to me. And did you draw on memories from that time oh, to absolutely. play Jules? Yeah, it was, I mean, very similar. Tanglewood, I think, is a very, it's a really well-known <laughs> arts camp. Well, ta like Tanglewood is uh, where the Boston Symphony Orchestra has their summer home. There. It's oh, this big music yeah. festival, and then they have a school as well, and they have a, a high school program. And so I went there when I was a kid, and it inspired me so much of how I wanted to live my life as an artist. But nonetheless, my, my life took a different turn. <laughs> and what about you? Did you know, did you do arts camp? And did you, when did you know that you wanted to act? Um, you know, I didn't <clears throat> until recently, I think. Well, you went back to went arts to camp, camp recently? I didn't go to arts camp. I, I, I went to school, public school in Queens, which, you know, you're surrounded by enough uh, multicultural, uh, multi-ethnicity multi and, and characters. I, but, so if anything, that was my training. But uh, I took my first acting class like two years ago. Um, I just thought I had gotten stale, um, and um, yeah, it was. So it was, nice, David. Yeah, <laughs> it was eye-opening and and really, uh, you know, fulfilling for me, because um, I think you know early on in my career, when I was a kid, I didn't really care <laughs> about acting. Like I, I just did it. It was you know, it was saying lines in a funny way, and then when I. <laughs> When I started to care, I didn't know where to channel that energy um, uh, outside of the work I was getting. And when the work I was getting became sort of monotonous is when I started thinking, well, maybe I should take a class, get a coach, start listening to people instead of making my own decisions about my, uh, my craft, if you will. So that's my... And did taking the class change the way you approached acting? Yeah, I, well, it, <clears throat> it got me in touch with a voice that, uh, a stronger voice, because the roles that I was doing in this class were mostly theater. Um, they were mostly Neil LeBute plays. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, you know, there's, they're really like, interesting So you're saying roles. like comedies. Like comedies, <laughs> yeah. But they were interesting roles for, for men and, and um, you know, for adult men and... Uh, I'm used to, I do weird, I play weird, I'm a weird, I'm a small little weird thing. Oh, stop. Yeah, so, so getting to do like real people, it was, uh, was real great. Real assholes. Real assholes, play, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Plays are that's true. <laughs> and you obviously were in Six Feet Under, you were on Numbers. What is it like Dumb going three years? <laughs> I didn't name it. I know, but every yeah. time I wrote about that show, I would have to look it up to be like... How do you Numb three years, yeah, I know. It was always very... Um, There's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> I thought you I know made what that up. Happened? I actually thought I made no, it up. No, you know what it was? It's so stupid, but um, originally it, 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 it said numbers on the screen with a three, and then the three became a two, and then a one, and the show would start. Uh -huh. And then they got rid of that, but they kept the three. And why shouldn't they? <laughs> why sh yeah, why not? It didn't make any sense anymore, so <laughs> why, not, uh, why not keep it? Yeah. But how, how is it being back on TV? And I guess Amazon isn't really TV, and Mike Newell directed the pilot, and he's an amazing director, but did you bring any of your TV experience to the show, or was it not relevant? Yeah, I mean, it was like shooting a TV show. Yeah. Much. I mean, we, we were <laughs> under a TV, a TV schedule. Although, it was pretty luxurious. They yeah. gave us a lot of, I mean, there was a lot of rehearsal time because of Mike Newell's insistence, which was wonderful and luxurious, and we all got to really delve into the characters, delve into the book, and talk about all of the relationships and work a little bit with the younger versions of ourselves. So that was pretty great and unusual for television. And, um, and then the shooting was, I think, I mean, it was rapid, but it was... It was, uh, it was there was time. There was a lot of time, and it never felt um, it never felt like we were going through the motions. You know, mm -hmm. eventually on a TV series, you're just trying to make your day. Um, in this case, mm -hmm. you know, we Mike was um, really adamant that it feels special, 
that he strike the right tone, that it looked beautiful, that we all looked beautiful. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of you know um, thought put into um, to how to shoot it, and so. I never felt, you know how sometimes they stick a camera in your, right in your face, except maybe for the limo scene. But other than that, yeah. everything felt sort of far away, and it felt, when we were doing it, more like a play amongst ourselves Yeah. that, that cameras were around for rather than sort of cameras in your face and, you know. Yeah. I don't know. That's, yeah, it was nice. They, they, covered, they covered it a lot, meaning we did a lot of different angles. And we did a day and a half on one scene yeah. where it was just the three of us in a small office and it took a total of probably 17, 18 hours. We did this scene like 65 times. Actually, that would, that's a really cool scene. That would be a good that's, show because that's, an ama that's amazing. The, the art department did this incredible job because they had to flesh out his whole career, this right. Ethan character's whole career. They had awards and they had all of the cartoons and all of the, the cells and the stills and the the clay sculptures, and it was unbelievable set to see this creative madman's workshop and all of his life around it, all of his fancy life and all of his fancy awards and wealth around it. So that was, that was an amazing space. They photoshopped me into pictures with famous people, and one of the people what? they, they photoshopped yeah. me in a picture, and one of the people was Tupac. Yeah, with Tupac, that's right. <laughs> and uh, it's just me and Tupac. <laughs> Um, Did you steal that? Because, you, you know, Tupac have. would want to take a picture with me, obviously. Clearly. It was the 90s. It was so, that was the other thing. There was, you know, we had to get into each uh, decade. So we, you know, had to get ourselves all 80s up, and then we'd have to get ourselves all 90s up. And mm. so Tupac was visited the 90s set. He was, yeah. And how well did you guys know each other before shooting? Not at all, or reasonably, or? Lauren and I? Yeah. Um, I think we met at the audition there. Briefly. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I've been a fan of her work for a oh, very long time. Steve. Like I said, when she walked in, I was like, oh my God, it, it, it just, it was. You're like, I'll never get the part of Jules now. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, exactly. You know? No, I was so happy to see her. It was a relief because you read these things. And in this case, the script was so illustrious and so heartfelt. And that character, the character of Jewel, Jules, required. Um, Someone who could be funny and vulnerable and, uh, and brilliant. And angry. And maybe slightly angry. And, and maybe you just, a need, bit a, you just need an incredibly well-rounded, talented person Thanks. to pull that off. And look, she even gave us the facial expressions to match. Yeah, I see. That's what I did on set whenever it was called for. I just dial up the right face. Yeah, Mike Newell would say, go vulnerable. <laughs> and there it was. That was my... Be my tortured. Face. Less torture. <laughs> More sadness. <laughs> He's British. It's the voice of God talking. Yeah. He and sounds he, like Gandalf. <laughs> he does sound like Gandalf. He's very... If you close your eyes, it's like being directed by Gandalf. <laughs> and now to our audience, please. Hey, guys. I uh, actually got to see the, the pilot uh, earlier, and uh, I actually enjoyed it. So I was just wondering, like, uh, what was it like um, shooting for a web TV series, you know, in contrast with uh, working in, like, cable or broadcast TV? I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't think there was... Uh, in my experience, I just went and did my work like I would do on any job, be it in whatever medium. So I, I don't know. What do you think? I think the only part of the process that's different is that Amazon is the only... I don't know what you call them, network, I guess, that um, you know, streams their pilots, that lets the audience watch their pilots before it goes to series, lets the audience rate and review the pilots, lets critics watch. Um, it's a really interesting, unique thing to them, um, and really kind of brave, because they're, they're showing you exactly what they hope will become a signature show for their network, and they're relying heavily on the audience to tell them um, if they if they want to see more of it or not. So nicely democratized. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it rather than the typical model, which is that a network just kind of you never see the pilot, and then you hear about all these great pilots that were made that weren't picked up to series, um, and the audience really had, never gets a chance to to see them. This is this is different. Next question, please. 
Hi guys, over here. Um, thank you so much for being here. I was just wondering, what was your favorite um, scene to shoot for the first episode? Hmm. You're in like every scene. So. <laughs> um, in a sense, there's this really demoralizing scene in the acting class <laughs> where I'm like on a stage getting ripped apart by this acting teacher who thinks I have, abs that the character has absolutely zero talent. And um, I don't know, there was actually the, the purity of it, of just having to stand there and take this. And then there were all of these incredible um, background actors or extras that, that were um, from the school that we were shooting in. I don't remember the, which school we were in, but they were college kids. And they were so beautiful and helpful in the scene with me, even though they didn't have lines, but they were like with me getting torn apart. And it was, um, I don't know, it's just a really special day because of that, because I, I felt such a connection to them and it was a very gratifying thing. So I actually just wanted to like, say that to any of them who might hear this because I'm so grateful for your work that day. Thank you. Hi guys, thank you both for coming in today. So my question is, you know, being in the acting business and TV, do you guys have a personal activity you guys like to do on your downtime or time for yourself? On set? Or on, like off set or just on your personal schedule? Oh, I have a big garden and I grow vegetables and flowers and eat out of it all summer, so that's what I do. <laughs> I'm a gardener. I've been trying to garden on my yeah. stoop, and it's not going so well. I'll have to get advice from you. I have a two-year-old, and I play fantasy baseball. Nice. <laughs> God love you. I'm praying for you with a two-year-old man. That's, that's a hard age. It's and you guys can watch the pilot now on Amazon.com, Amazon Prime. Yes. Yeah, you can, you can what you don't, yeah. give your you just need an Amazon account. You, need an, you don't even need an Amazon Prime account. Just watch it. I think it's on you know? for a few more days, right? It's yeah, you only have a few more days. So Hello? yeah, you better watch it now, because if for nothing knows, else, the watch fashion it literally right now. The '80s fashion is spectacular. I mean, they yes. really got it right. Yes, so. you killed it. We lived it. We know it. Thank <laughs> you, guys. Pads. Pastel, blue the, eyeshadow, the, the bad jeans, I the mom jeans. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you.